The friendly skies are becoming a lot more turbulent, with onboard violent incidents on the rise. And that's even before the high volume, high stress holiday travel season. Shabele Karazana, my colleague at the 19th, has a look at just how dangerous it's become to be a flight attendant. This year alone, there's been a more than five-fold increase in the number of violent incidents on planes. The Federal Aviation Administration initiated 183 investigations in 2020, about average. But as of mid-November of this year, the FAA initiated nearly 1,000. It's an unprecedented spike. Going all the way back to 1996, there hasn't been a single year with even half as many FAA investigations as there were in 2021. And it's putting flight crews in harm's way. Here's a look at just some incidents this year from NBC's Tom Costello. In Fort Lauderdale, an all-out fist fight after passengers deplaned refusing to wear masks. <laughs> In D.C., a passenger removed after allegedly arguing with flight attendants over the mask rule. In Denver, an emergency landing after a man tried to open an emergency exit. Police in Denver arrested this man after the airline says he punched a flight attendant in the face twice when she accidentally bumped into him and then apologized. She had blood splattered on the outside of her mask. The FAA says there have been nearly 5,000 reports of unruly passengers so far this year, a record, nearly three quarters related to the mask order. And that's just a small taste of what flight crews across the country have had to endure. According to a survey from the Flight Attendants Union, more than 85% of flight attendants dealt with unruly passengers in the first half of 2021. Nearly 60% experienced at least five incidents and one in six flight attendants has been part of a physical attack. It's absolutely unacceptable. Breaking up fights and dealing with verbal or physical abuse should not be part of the flight crew job description. And behind the numbers are stories of real human beings. For example, my colleague Shabelli writes about Cher Taylor, a black flight attendant who experienced one of these outbursts. Taylor was forced to step into the middle of a fight between two men, intercepting threats and racial slurs spouted by a white passenger involved in the confrontation. It triggered something in my soul that will never, ever leave, she said. She dreamt of the fight that night, but this time she was being forced to watch. She called her therapist. When she got home, she didn't go outside for five days. Now, with the holiday season upon us and travel on the rise, what kinds of brawls and tantrums and just downright rudeness could airline employees be subjected to in the coming weeks? And more importantly, what in the world has happened to us as a society? Joining me now, the author of that article and economy reporter for the 19th, Chibelli Carazana, and president of the Association of Flight Attendants, CWA, Sarah Nelson. Chibelli, Sarah, thank you both so much for being here. You know this is an issue near and dear to me. My mom was a flight attendant for more than 30 years. My best friend is a flight attendant. This is really important for us to talk about to try to maybe keep some of these people off the naughty list. Uh, Chibelli, we know about three quarters of these incidents are mask related. What are some of the other factors that are contributing to this spike and why? Well, Aaron, first of all, it's great to join you, seeing you here in the anchor seat. It's great to see you again and, um, and Sarah to speak with you again. Look, a lot of these incidents are mask related. We know the mask mandate has played a large part in this, partially because we did not have a federal mask mandate until this year. There's a lot of confusion around that topic, but that is not the only piece and we need to think about this job and how it has worked in the past. Sexual harassment is huge um, for flight attendants, a big issue they have to deal with. There's a lot of, like you mentioned, the racial slurs, homophobic comments. That is all part of what these attendants are, are contending with on a daily basis. And so I think it's sort of a layered uh, problem taking into a, into account the sort of the history of sexual harassment in this, in this profession in particular, and also this stress and anxiety that has built and built and built over the past two years. Yeah, I read in your uh, eye-popping article that alcohol is also a factor in, in this as well, contributing to uh, people's misbehavior uh, once they get on these flights. Uh, Sarah, you spoke to Shabelli for her article. How is this affecting your flight attendants and how they do their jobs every single day? Well, first of all, I really want to thank Shabelli for her very, very careful reporting, uh, honest reporting, and 
I don't think that there is another reporter that Cher Taylor would have been willing to speak to. I know that that was a big deal for her to tell her story, and that was very difficult. And that's what's going on out there is it's not just the issues that are making the evening news, but the way that people are being chipped away at and the way that they are being shaken to their core by these experiences. Uh, sexual harassment, racism, uh, the homophobic slurs that are hurtled at people. This is not about any, it, it's not about sex. It's not about racism, it's about power. And yeah. it's about people feeling that they are out of control at this time and being told that we're at odds with each other and being told that there is an attack on their personal liberties so that they can we can keep people apart. All of those issues are tactics of the boss to keep us apart. And so this has been really pushed and 61% of the incidents I also include uh, sexual, uh, racial, or homophobic slurs. And so <laughs> this is really about a society that is trying to regain some control when they have felt so out of control and not given uh, correct information about this pandemic, being kept in a state of uncertainty all this time. You can't do that to people. You have to, have to operate off the same set of facts. Flight attendants are there for the safety, health, and security of everyone on board. We are there to be leaders. When that leadership is undermined, all of us are less safe. So we have to get this under control because the only way that air travel happens is with the spirit that we're all in this together and everyone following the rules. So we've got to get this under control for the safety of everyone, for the ability to have the freedom of flight and for the basic uh, common decency that we need to show each other to have a civil society. Uh, yes, yeah, Sarah, such a good reminder. Flight attendants are there to provide safety, not to be made to feel less unsafe. And, and, and yes, flying, the, the ability to fly and, and travel freely across this country is absolutely a privilege. So, Shabelli, we know this is a problem. How are airlines trying to address this issue? Well, we know that airlines are trying to crack down. There's messages when you get on a plane. I flew recently, I heard the message, you know, the pilot saying, flight attendants are my representatives in the cabin. You need to respect them and what they say. Uh, we have seen um, some airports put uh, messages on to go alcohol, reminding folks you cannot take this with you on a plane. The FAA has tried to crack down on this as well, sort of trying to tear away at pieces of this. And of course, the FAA is uh, pursuing some uh, 37 of these cases have been referred to the FBI of the most mm. serious cases on planes uh, to try to see if there is some enforcement that can come about quickly to send a message to folks, particularly as this holiday season is approaching, that this is not OK and this is going to be enforced quite strictly on planes. Well, Sarah, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg came out in support of a no-fly list for violent and unruly passengers. Critics say that that's too harsh of a punishment and could splinter families. Do you support that idea? And if so, how do you envision a fair no-fly list? Well, look, I think that there has to be very clear consequences. And if someone is acting out on a plane violently against other people or against the crew and putting everyone in danger, uh, they should lo lose their privileges to fly. Um, now, each case needs to have a due process, and we want to make sure that people's civil li liberties are maintained in this process. But if there is a fulsome investigation by the FAA and they have determined that someone is worthy of a fine, for example, or if DOJ concludes its prosecution and someone is convicted of a crime, they should be put on a no-fly list. We can work through the issues and, and uh, the due process that needs to be in place there, but the consequences have to be communicated to people because that does serve as a deterrent. And we will see these incidents go down when people understand that there are real consequences for acting this way on a plane. Well, Sarah, more than 93% of TSA employees have gotten vaccinated. And United Airlines CEO Scott Kirby was on the Today Show this week. He said that out of 70,000 employees, United only terminated about 200 because of vaccine mandate noncompliance. Was the controversy over these mandates overblown? Absolutely. Uh, this, first of all, uh, let's, let's be clear. We were very lucky in the United States to have access to the vaccines almost before the rest of the world. We know that we were nine months ahead of Canada and Canada was clamoring for that vaccine. And once they got it, now 90% of the country is vaccinated. We have had conflicting information in this, in this country. It has been politicized and people have been given false information about the vaccine and that has been what's been in the way. 
when employers are putting the vaccine mandate in place, it is making people have to think about it. It's making people have to get good information because they have to think about whether or not they would give up their job in order to avoid getting the vaccine. For flight attendants, our workplace is the world. So we're not just subject to the vaccine mandates here in the United States, we're subject to the vaccine mandates in every other country as well. So we have to be clear with people about the fact that this is a worldwide pandemic. The only way that we're going to end it is if we end it together. And if the virus is allowed to exist anywhere, we all continue to be in jeopardy. So these vaccine mandates are great. Now, I want to be really clear, though, too. The union has a role here. We have to enforce the terms of the contract. We have to make sure that it's fair. We have to make sure that people have proper notification and support in order to get the vaccine um, if these are work mandates. And we also have to make sure that there is a fair uh, process for accommodations because there are some people who have medical concerns and and uh, serious uh, religious uh, concerns that, that should have an accommodation process that is fair and transparent, equal for everyone. Well, Chibeli Carazana and Sarah Nelson, thank you both so much. Enjoy your holiday. Thank you so much. Thanks, Erin. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.